Hey guys, it's Wednesday, uh, December 7th, and today's going to be um, six counts, 20 minutes. Um, again, I'm starting the cycle over. This will be my second day. So the goal is 13 reps a minute for two minutes, and then bumping it back down to 11, holding all the way through. That last minute uh, is always a get what I can get. So if I can go out more than 11, um, I can get another 13, even better. Uh, last session, I believe I got 14 reps. So we'll see what I can do. Um, I'm dragging a bit today. Uh, nothing, nothing wrong, nothing big. Just a low energy day. Um, a couple big sessions in a row. Um, all of last week actually was pushing pretty hard. So we'll see what today brings. I thought about um, doing 13 to start, taking a minute at 11 and then doing 13 again, and maybe progressing up in that fashion. Um, if I work my way up to 10 minutes um, of 13, alternating, gives me 240 reps at the end of the cycle. Um, but let's see, let's see how it goes, by, by year. We're just gonna get the reps in. We'll see how I feel about a finisher. My chest is sore, but in a good way, from the dips yesterday. My front delts, not so much, which is a good sign, which means that I was keeping the focus on the chest and the triceps. Of course, you know, the shoulders always come into play, specifically the front delts when you're doing dips. Um, but it feels a little less so, which is good because that's the troublesome area on my left side if I do too much or if I overstretch. Um, so it seems as that is in check, so that means I can proceed cautiously, keeping the deadlifts in, maybe eventually getting back and doing some ring. Uh, dips, I'm sorry, I think I said that. That's, that does have been on my mind. 13 reps a minute. Let's start things off. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. One. One, two, three, four, five. Two. One, two, three, four, five. Three. One, two, three, four, five. Four. One, two, three, four, five, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, seven. One, two, three, four, five, eight. One, two, three, four, five, nine. One, two, three, four, five, ten. One, two, three, four, five, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, two. One, two, three, four, five, three. One, two, three, four, five, four. One, two, three, four, five, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, seven. One, two, three, four, five, eight. One, two, three, four, five, nine. One, two, three, four, five, ten. One, two, three, four, five. Eleven. One, two, three, four, five, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, two. One, two, three, four, five, three. One, two, three, four, five. Four. 
All right, guys, we're back. Tough. Tough to hold the 11th. Later. The last <coughs> six, five, four. There's that. We're all the way down to the last one. But tough to hold 11. Not impossible, but I had to be mindful. <coughs> I couldn't take my time. So, I have a feeling, um, a cycle using 13s is going to progress slowly. 
So it seems. <coughs> Granted, um, as mentioned at the beginning, I did feel pretty tired today. So we'll see. We'll see how things go. I did something a little different yesterday. Um, I've mentioned about my ultra running years. And towards the end, I progressed to race walking. I like to think of it as ultra walking because I don't pay attention to strict race walking, race walking regulations, which are not having a bent knee at the beginning, both feet having to be on the ground at all times. <clears throat> Since I'm not being judged, I can walk any way I want to. And for me, ultra walking, it's more efficient to have a slightly bent leg. It saves you some wear and tear at the end. Um, I can go pretty fast for walking. I was walking 11 minute miles, averaging on a long race, um, high 11s to mid 12s. My last official 50K was actually about 35 plus miles, and I did it in seven hours. Um, so I think I averaged a 12 something pace, a high 12 something pace throughout. Um, and I largely didn't run too much anymore. A little bit here and there just for fun, but sometimes a lot of the Galloway uh, run walk, which I really enjoy walking for, running for, however, as a matter of fact, my fastest half marathon, which is I think 141. Not super fast, but it was my fastest. Um, I managed to do it by running four minutes, walking a minute um, until the very end when I ran the whole thing. Same with my fastest marathon, which I did as a training one, training run for a 50 miler. Um, and I did it the day after I ran 20 miles. And I think I did a 356. Um, only time I tried to run a faster marathon, and I think the only time I broke four. Um, again, not super fast, but I was happy with it considering that I did a 20 the day before. Um, and I ran for nine minutes, I walked for a minute until mile 18, and then I ran the whole thing in, feeling really good at the end. Um, so, anyway, I like to walk. Maybe even more so than running. Actually, definitely more so than running. Um, but a while back, Ted McDonald, Barefoot Ted, from uh, Born to Run fame, issued a challenge of 30 days running a minimum half mile every day. He wanted to find that micro dose of running that everyone can fit in their schedule, benefit from. So the least amount with the biggest payoff. And he came upon half mile. Half mile every day for 30 days. And I did that for about 120 days until I missed, up, missed out because I had to go to the hospital for the Bell palsy uh, at the insistence of my wife, ex wife. Um, <coughs> so anyway, I missed that one day after several months. I started it back up. I'm adding something in, just uh, 10, 15 seconds of really fast running. Um, and then backing off and then really fast. And I do that maybe anywhere from six to 10 times. And I did that yesterday, and I think that's why my legs are particularly tired today, and I didn't have as much um, energy. Not to mention that yesterday was a pretty big Navy SEAL session. So that's a long way of, one, delaying a finisher, two, sort of uh, prefacing that I think 13 reps a minute is going to be difficult, but I don't know how I'm going to adjust to some little bit of faster running. So it may not be as hard as I think. Let's do pull-ups. Today is 4, 3, 2, 1, 1. Um, pull-ups, and we'll mix in eight count body orders and one pumps. See how it goes. Um, I just mix the burpees up as I go. Um, and some band presses. 
Sorry for that long ramble there. Just five. One round. Three pull ups. One pumps. And presses again. So, I think that was two, 226, which really for the second day in a cycle isn't a bad number to be at. It's only 10 below my best, with only um, two minutes, three minutes, we were counting the last minute, added in at 13. see how I can progress. <coughs> Actually, let's see two pumps. No reason. One. I just want to. Catch my breath. Two rounds. So 
I'm going to take a minute to wish Barefoot Burpees and Burpee Maddie and Nick Hardy, three people who have been absent. Barefoot Burpees and Burpee Maddie, not for that long, about a week, two weeks. Um, I know Barefoot Burpees will be back soon. Um, but just to uh, let you guys know that I'm thinking of you, that I know everyone is thinking of you, that you miss. Um, hoping you come back soon. Although, it's a little scary thinking that uh, Maddie has had all this time to be plotting, scheming, designing uh, new routines of torture. Two reps. Round three. <coughs> Easy one pumps. <coughs> one. Two, three, four, Down to ones. I'm gonna do one. Shake my hand out. Pause for about 30 seconds. Do another one, and I'm done for the day. All right. One more breath. Nothing major as a finisher. Easing into some things. Done. So, <coughs> I was thinking this morning, reading more about the concept of uh, cosmogenesis, which is the um, universe as a creative, intelligent, evolving system, a thing of its own, indivisible, um, and that we are the means of self-recognition. We're the means of it gaining conscious awareness, aware of being aware. Although, I still think it takes more of a 
human-centric, person-centric view, and that even a squirrel, even a tree, even a slug, are a means of conscious expression, meaning that it is the universe being self-aware of itself as a tree, as a slug, as a star. Um, humans are unique in that, in that we can gain the awareness of ourselves being aware that we are the aware universe. There's a lot of awares in there, but it seems to sum things up. Um, in this living, thriving intelligence, in this uh, universe gaining awareness of itself, um, which has always been there, it's just, it's part of evolution that the universe is evolving in the same way that we evolved from single cells, that we evolved from uh, something so tiny, emerging from the ocean, gaining purchase on the land, um, and eventually becoming human life forms. Um, that the universe um, was this innate awareness, possibly before the Big Bang, and the Big Bang was an uh, energetic explosion and agitation of pure intelligence um, and a wish to know itself as more. Speculation. Um, speculation of speculation on my part, even. Um, however, it is based on uh, Vedic philosophy, based on uh, yogic thought, uh, Buddhist, tantric, um, as well as Hebrew cosmology, Kabbalah, um, and science as well. Um, so anyway, the thought is generosity, that within this intelligence, there is a generosity of spirit itself, intent. I talk a lot about intent, and the intent is generous, meaning that um, the sun isn't generous by way of an individual feeling. The sun doesn't feel generous. The sun is generosity. It gives. It gives freely on trees, on oceans, on land, on people, on squirrels. Um, yeah, I have squirrels on my mind today. Um, anyway, the sun is just generous by its very nature, which is the nature of the universe. There's no separation. You can't say the nature of the sun is separate from the nature of the universe because the sun is the universe sunning. We are the universe peopling. Uh, Alan Watts would always say that, you know, in the nature of leaves, leaving, being leaves, humans are humaning. As waves wave, humans exist. Humans are what they are. We're the, the nature of the universe expressed as humans, and then more so as individual humans, which is even more remarkable that we are not just the same. Um, you know, every dog has a different personality, every cat has a different personality. Um, I would assume as we get down to more simplistic life forms that that personality, that a slug is a slug, although I like to think that squirrels have different personalities. Um, and my interaction when I see them in my yard seem to say yes. Anyway, um, that that is the same with generosity, that it's what the universe does. It gives. It gave particles and gases. Carl Sagan um, uh, talked about, and Michael Swarg, yeah, Michael Swim as well, uh, that one of the most remarkable things, if not the most remarkable thing, is that if you take hydrogen and leave it alone, it eventually became a human. I mean, that's crazy to think about. Hydrogen just a gas, a mixture of gases as well, became a human. That particles arrange themselves and are continuously arranging themselves to be the, the subatomic structure of the universe, of the world, of me, of you, of a squirrel. Um, and that is generosity. Again, it's not a particular thing being generous. It's not a feeling. It's not something that says, today I'm going to be more giving. This is Christmas. I want to give a really special present to my loved one. Um, that I, I want to be more 
I want to spend more money on this person or I want to give money to somebody in need. That's generous and, and it's a great thing to do. However, it is not the true spirit of generosity, which is just simply giving, 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 giving. And it's what we do. We give thoughts freely. We give our heartbeats freely. We give our breath freely. Our breath intermixes with the um, uh, life of trees and we're an even exchange. Um, they take in the bad gases we breathe out and they turn them into uh, energy thriving and they take energy from the sun and from the atmosphere and they clean the air and we breathe in that clean air. Um, it's a generous universe that we live in. And when we, um, when we get quiet, when we meditate, when we do um, our sets of burpees and our mind is occupied, that's when we're purely, more consciously in touch with that generosity, um, with our generosity of being is a better way of saying it. And so when we think about it, burpees are what we give ourselves. It's a generous serving of repetition. It's a generous serving of pure spirit energy being converted into reps of something that we seem to enjoy. Um, so burpees are part of the generosity of spirit, part of the generosity of the universe, the generosity of being. Everything is. Um, when we can bring just a touch of that awareness right before we do a set, um, it really does make a difference. If we remember it when we're done, it really makes a difference. If we remember it when we are giving Christmas presents, Hanukkah presents, um, knowing that we are just expressing the nature of the universe, um, as well as something personal, unique to us, um, then we are aligned with spirit. We are aligned with love, unconditional love. We're aligned with the universe itself. Um, so don't think of burpees as just mere repetition. It is the creative expression of the universe being given in gratitude. Gratitude that we have the heart that can do this, the lungs that can put up with it, the brains that can take the um, suffering that we're putting ourselves through, the pain, the unique brand of torture that we pit, that we pick to be our uh, fitness routine. All of that is pure generosity of being, of beingness. I, with that, let me just send it and say thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, that's it. You guys have a good day. All right. Bye.